Divine Truth Spirit Assistance Discussions, giving assistance to people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this Spirit Assistance Discussion is Constance and Assistance to Repent, during which, for the second time, Mary channels Constance, who lived as a slave woman in the Indies over 300 years ago, and many millions of other spirits who have now been assisted by Jesus, Amantu, and other celestial spirits to make some progress in removing themselves from the earthbound condition. The session was recorded on the 20th of March 2018 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello everyone, uh, Mary and I are here again today. Today uh, we weren't properly prepared with our conscience and repentance and forgiveness discussions so we thought that we might do a little bit of more channeling uh, for you. Mary's getting herself ready, so Mary's just relaxing and getting herself ready doing that. And uh, at this stage we were going to probably catch up with a few people that we caught up with last time we did some channeling. And uh, who knows, uh, there might be some other people too that we finish up talking with as well this, just today. So we'll just uh, leave just a pause for a second and, uh, until Mary's ready and, uh, and see how you go listening to this. And if you have any questions, send them in to us. That'd be good. Thanks. Okay. Okay, I'll be here. I'm be here again. How are you, Constance? Yeah. Had an emotional time the last, well, since a few weeks ago we talked to you last. Right. Are we having troubles now? Right. What are the troubles you've been having? Feels sad. Yeah. There's lots Sad. of sadness to feel, isn't there? Uh, there'd be so much sadness. Mm -hmm. And I do, I do not know how to make repairs. I keep, I keep feeling like I did so much badness in my anger. Mm -hmm. And I feel so much badness done to me on earth. Mm -hmm. And I feel sadness, like a sea of sadness, mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Have you talked about it with the friends that you made last, a fortnight ago? And what did they say to you? Just feel the sadness. Yeah. But I, I want to make it better what I did. Yeah, um, well, some of the things you might be able to make better, and this is a thing about repentance and what the process you're going through is a bit of repentance process now. And the thing about repentance is that we can't make everything better because there are some things that, you know, that we did and unfortunately they're done now, you know, and you can't sort of fix them up anymore. You can do your best to do it and God knows that you have a feeling about that, but, but one, one of the things you can do is talk to God about that, about the fact that if you can do whatever you can do to make it better, then you want to do that. But also if God can do whatever he can do to make it better, that you would really love him to do that for you too. Does that make sense? It's like, because really in the long run, it's only God that can fix some of the things now. Do you see what I'm saying? Some of the things that we do, um, they have such a long-term ramification on people's lives and effect on people's, uh, on you know, on the earth itself and the generations of people's lives mm. that there's very little we can do about it now that even though we stopped doing those bad things or those wrong things, sometimes there's very little we can do about it after that, aside from having a heartfelt desire to do what we can and also having sincere prayer or desire with God to, to try to help fix what it, and do whatever we can to fix those particular problems. Does that make sense? And that's, that's why the repentance process is so important to involve God because, because there's literally oftentimes very little we can do to fix the things that we did wrong. 
it's it's crushing. Yeah. To see, first first I said I sense I I felt a lot of sadness about what what be done to me. Mm. Yeah. And then then I knew what I'd done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I when I've been angry. Mm. And now it's it's like a crushing crush mm -hmm. that I, I I feel the the pain of so much hurting others mm -hmm. because I because I'd be so angry because of some of the choices you made while you were angry yeah the key to to let is let yourself cry about what you did and talk to God about whatever you can do to fix it does that make sense. And God will show you what you can do to fix some of those things. And, but some of the things won't be able to be fixed by anybody other than God. And, uh, and this is where you can ask for God to help to, to fix some of those things for you. But you have to be sincere about that, obviously, for God to respond, as you know. But I think you're pretty sincere, aren't you, about it? Yeah. The key is to be willing to feel the sadness that's there, no matter what happens. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's a very simple process, but it's very, sometimes it feels very hard, you know, like sometimes it feels very traumatic, but it, it needs to be done because as you feel it, it comes out of you. And then once it's out of you, you won't, you, you'll remember the events, but you won't, you know, you won't feel bad about them anymore. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. The first thing that happened was things got better. Mm. I felt sad, but things got better. Yeah. And, and so I your surroundings look a bit better now? Free. I felt free, yeah. free than I ever felt. Yeah. Because I first, when I spoke after, after. Two weeks ago? Yeah. Yep. I, I felt. I felt a lot of badness done to me mm. and mm. and I and I got help mm -hmm. and then everything got better mm. I felt better mm. then it was like I felt suddenly crushing yeah bad because, because I of... knew what I did now mm. and all the Not just the men folk. I heard. I heard the women folk. Yeah. In the in the earth, and I want them be angry, and and now that they're angry, they be angry, angry, and and I I made it happen. So now they're angry, and and you know you feel like you're complicit in making them angry. Yeah. And that, that is true to a degree, isn't it? You I are, put it in their heart, the hardness in their heart. I put it in many times, many times. When you say you put it in, that's probably not strictly true completely, though, because while you did assist to put it in, at the end of the day, they also had to make a choice to put it in too. Does that make sense? So it was like a combined effort. Does that make sense? But I used... I use their fear. I use their fear and their hurt, and I made them angry. Mm -hmm. No, I understand how you did it, and the key is to be repentant for that, which you're now being. So, the key is to let yourself have a cry about the effect that it's had on other women, and the effect also it's had on men, and uh, and talk to God about whatever you can do to fix it. You can help people fix it. And one of the things that God will probably ask you to do is to something you know, as you know, there's many women spirits who pass over in the spirit world now, people who from the earth who pass over in the spirit world who are women, who who are still angry. And once you go through this anger and the sadness of your own, you'll be able to help those particular women get over their anger and connect to their sadness too. Does that make sense? So there's, you could say there's jobs that God can give you that will help you work through, you know, the effect of what you did. But also you need to understand that it's very important you don't like punish yourself or you, the law has already punished you for what you did. And the feelings you have now are the punishment for what you did. You don't have to punish yourself more for what you did. You just need to feel the feelings you have now about what you did. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between 
feeling the feelings about what you did and then punishing yourself for doing what you did. And the key is to stop punishing yourself for what you did and to just feel the feelings about what you did. You know, the sorrow you feel now and the sadness you feel now and the regret that you have now. Those are all feelings you can feel. And if you can let yourself feel them, then you'll be able to get rid of the feelings that you have. But, but you need to let yourself feel them to do that. And that's a part of that repentance process. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. I made, I made so many ladies, girls, angry because I thought I was protecting them like my mm. own girl. Yeah, yeah. And I want somehow to let them know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, there'll be times when you'll be able to let them know that it's wrong. You know, the people who are still alive on earth that you've been influencing this way, there will be times when you'll be able to let them know that it is wrong. But there'll be other times now where they're so involved in their own anger that you're not going to be able to let them know that it's wrong. And only it's only God and God's laws that can correct them after that point. And that and that's and that's a significant part, isn't it, of what we do? We, you know, we do things without thinking about the long term ramifications or effects of what we do. Yeah. And and that's really sad because we don't see all of the things that happen until we get over our anger and we look at it all and we go, oh no, you know, it's, yeah. it's terrible what has happened. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But the key is to have compassion for what's happened and compassion for the people that you've influenced and compassion for yourself, but also just to be very careful about not punishing yourself for what you did. The law itself, God's laws, have already done that. They've already, they're already in the process of correcting you. And the fact that you feel what you did was bad is a good thing, actually. Does that make sense? The key is to feel about it and to fit, go through the feelings of it and how sad it is that those things were done. And to go through the feelings to such an extent that now you're able to help other people who you know, have had people like you who have influenced them to do bad things. Make sense? I, I'd be gone, but I, I just want, I just want everybody to know, to, to feel. To feel their sadness and their fear rather than their anger. Is that what you were? Yeah. Even when it feels like you're going to die. Yeah, even when it, even when your anger is the only thing it feels like you want to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Because and even it, when you feel like it makes them win when yeah. you feel sad, yeah. it's not the truth. No, no. You and feel free. You do. All my life I wanted free, yeah. and only when I felt the badness done to me did I feel free. free. Yeah, that's very true. And it's a very important truth that we need to share on earth, isn't it? Yeah. That people need to... Stop thinking about how angry they are and start feeling about how sad and afraid they are. And that will help them a lot to work through their particular problems. And it will also stop a lot of badness that happens on the world, in the world, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so much. Yeah. So it's a very good message to tell people. How? Mm. What a tell. Yeah. And you'll have many opportunities to do that, you know. Some of the opportunities will be in the spirit world where you're living and where you, where the other women who have been, you know, still angry, they'll be able to come to you and you'll be able to give them good advice. And But also there'll be women who are still alive on earth who you can sometimes connect with and go, you know, what you're doing now, that's, you know, you're just angry for no reason now and there's no real reason. you just got to feel your sadness and you just got to feel how afraid you are and then, then the anger will go away. And, you know, these are the ways that you can help. But... You aren't going to fix everything because what often is what is done has long-term ramifications. Yeah, it is a pain. It's a special kind of pain mm. to know that. Yeah, and that's a pain you, you can only take to God and talk to God about. And, you know, repentance does involve a lot about talking to God about that kind of pain and 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 doing whatever you can to to do to, to right the wrong, but also have a longing for God to do whatever she can to right the wrong too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm. I thank you. I hope you got me. No thank worries. You. Yeah. Thanks for coming back, Constance. You can.
can call me Connie. Con Connie, yeah. I like it. You now. like Connie now? Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. worries. <laughs> In the future, we'll call you Connie. <laughs> Yeah, good short lesson on anger there. Yeah. <laughs> it was lovely that she came back. Mm. Mm. I think she was just... Uh, she felt very motivated to just... Um, to, she feels very passionate to me now about wanting to share that message. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Which is a part of that forgiveness process, isn't it? The repentance process. The, yeah, yeah, the repentance process and, the, and you know, also the forgiveness process of the people in her childhood because obviously a lot of the people who harmed her in her childhood were also acting in fear and anger, you know. Like, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a cycle that goes on where fear and anger, un, unfelt, turns into rage. Rage is then imposed on a group of people. They then, instead of feeling their fear and anger, they feel their rage and then they impose their rage on another group of people and so forth and so forth, it ends up being a never-ending cycle where, you know, you end up killing people even at the because of the rage and then, you know, the people you killed are all upset that you, you killed their family, you know, the, yeah. the family members are upset and the people you killed are upset in the spirit world upset and they just want to get back at you and now they try to do it, you know, and then yeah. it just ends up in these never-ending cycles and that's why places like the Middle East are in these never-ending cycles of violence. Yeah because nobody wants to feel any sadness or any fear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it, Constance's example is really interesting, isn't it, in that, um, you know, her mother really shut down her sadness and um, caused her to believe that anger was the... Solution. Sort of defiant, uh, quiet defiance mm. was the solution to her life situation and... Um, and because Constance didn't have that influence over her daughter, her daughter did better. And just feeling Connie's feelings today, she's very concerned about her own actions to instill that rage in women who have been hurt and abused. Mm. So she feels more at this point, her feelings feel more repentant about how she's harmed women in the same way she was harmed. Mm. She, I don't feel she's yet, yet fully... Um, through all of the, um, the men. harm that was done to to men mm. and others as a result of what she put into of course, yeah. to, um, those that, women. That's but a growing process, isn't it? She'll probably go through the first set of repentance first and then yeah. she'll It'll... need to have a look at repenting yeah. about her actions towards men, which is also going to involve forgiving the men in her childhood who harmed her yeah and obviously her, her 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 willingness to forgive those men is going to depend a lot upon her willingness to feel her grief about what they did so yeah yeah, yeah. it's good then yeah it's good it's that good she'd come hear. and have a good chat to hear from she's her. been with us a while the last it, two weeks hasn't she yeah, as you she, mentioned and she's popped in a few popped times in quite a number of times to talk and yeah hmm. yeah Okay. Well, that, that's the end of our session with Connie. So we'll just leave our session there with you. We're going to do some more mediumship, so they'll be in, in different recordings. We should mention that's our second chat with Constance, shouldn't we? So if you yes. didn't see her first one, it's probably worth. Yeah, if you at. didn't see her first chat, then yeah. uh, it was a couple of weeks from now, uh, before now. So yeah. I think it was something like uh, early March, early, early March, 18. I think the first week in March. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the actual dates, but. Yeah. Uh, but if you go back through our recordings, you'll see you'll see uh, the recording there with with Constance, and uh, have a look at that, and then you'll understand what we've been talking about <laughs> with her today. In fact, if you view this video in the mediumship uh, playlist, is that what the mediumship? Yeah. Then it should be just should a couple be of videos. A couple before. of videos prior, yeah. yeah. And uh, and it's also good to note that it is a chain of discussions, yeah. and there's also been a few discussions in between. Probably should be noted yeah. that we haven't recorded, but. Um, it's very important to understand that a lot of our mediumship that you hear is not a complete discussion that we have with the groups of spirits who come yeah. to talk with us. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so just thinking about our discussion with Connie, <laughs> mm. um, it, 
it's very powerful, isn't it, what she said about um, that she didn't feel free until she felt her grief. And we were talking about that, weren't we, about when you hold on to, you use anger to suppress your sadness with the person. That sadness leaves you attached to the person that you have who created mm. the sadness. There's a physical link that actually is established in the spirit world. You can see it. There's a link, a streaming link of your rage yeah. going to that person. But it, but it unfortunately binds you to the person. Mm. And so you, you can't sort of move on from the person yeah. who's caused your rage. Yeah. And, and you end up engaging a lot of rageful behaviour, not only towards the person, but also towards other people. Mm. Um, and that's another lesson of hers, I feel. The, the first one is that the joining that occurs yeah. where you are only going to feel free if you feel your sadness. Mm. And yet most people choose to not feel their sadness and so they're never going to be free of the people who have harmed them. Yeah, and, and that's and the first lesson. That's the first lesson. Mm. Sorry, can you hold the second lesson? Sure, we'll just talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah. I, I found it really poignant that she was saying, um, because she was literally a slave, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know there was no physical freedom in her life, and then. It, she hadn't felt free even though she passed, I can't remember how long ago. I think it was 300 years, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. something like that. Mm. She had not experienced a sense of freedom in all of that time, even though she was no longer physically bound as a slave because yeah. she was holding on to this, like, grief essentially, but then rage with the people who had enslaved her and yeah. done terrible things to her. Yeah. And so, like, and I could feel the power when she was saying it about like just feeling free for the first time it was mm. so beautiful for her mm. like in all of her existence because she obviously born into slavery, born into slavery yeah. and then to feel free for the first time and to understand I felt there was a lot of power in what she was trying to say very simply that she really wanted people to know like you need to feel your sadness in order to feel free. Like mm. you need to feel what's really in you to feel free. And if you don't, you, you remain joined to yeah. the events that caused your sadness. Yeah. And so you're never going to experience any freedom from them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. sad because many people pass who have been oppressed on earth, kept in slavery on earth, oppressed on earth, and they stay in the same oppression mm. after they've passed, but they don't need to. Yeah. But it is their sadness and their rage mm -hmm. that keeps them joined to that oppression. Yeah. And so they're never going to feel free of it. Yeah. So that's, that's a good first lesson, I feel. Yeah, what's the mm. second that you saw? The second is the, the unfortunate uh, destructive power of our anger. Yeah. Um, rather than choosing to feel her own sadness... She chose to, and, and she was educated to, mm -hmm. become resistive and angry. And her mother and grandmother both sort of put that sort of pressure on her. But, but as a result of that, she ended up in this state where in her anger, she now has to go through all of the things she's done. Mm -hmm. And as you could see from the channeling, it was actually harder for her to face what she had done mm -hmm. to others, yeah. which is actually a compensatory truth. Yeah. It is harder to face what we do to others than it is to face what others have done to us. And so she actually went through her grief fairly easily mm -hmm. about what yes. um, others had done to her. But when it comes to actually feeling what she has done to others, mm -hmm that's going to be a much uh, longer process and, and more difficult process. And it's often a process too that we start to engage a fair bit of self-punishment in. Yeah. So we have to you know, be aware that we can't really do that to mm -hmm. make the progress through it. But this, just the power of our rage, there are many people historically who just in their rage have caused so much damage that by the time they got the spirit world, when they compare the emotion they have to go through just because they've been hurt, mm. which is very was very small, in comparison to the emotion they have to go through from compensation due to their rage and what they did to others due to their rage. Mm. And so I think that's a very important lesson as well.
And and there, I mean, when you first started talking about that, I thought, yeah, that's a sad irony, isn't it? That we don't want to feel our pain, uh, so we do a whole heap of other things to avoid the pain, and yet w uh, when it comes down to it, healing from all of that, the, the pain of what's done to us is relatively easy. It's what we've done to avoid what was done to us that is hard. That is hard. But mm. then as you're talking about it, I'm realising, like, there's a lot of rage now on earth that is not there because we have been harmed. And that must be even harder to let go of the compensation because of that or the coming to terms with the fact that, um, or I, sorry, can I say, I feel there must be more compensatory pain when we are angry and we haven't even been harmed. So we've been harmed. Some of us are angry about, we use anger to avoid the pain of being harmed. Mm. Then others of us are just taught anger or we take on anger. As a controlling mechanism to, to get what we want. Powerful over others. Yeah, to get what we want, to, to be superior and get what we want. Yeah. And the pain associated with that third thing. Is even worse. It's even worse. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah, people who have that pain, uh, a, a struggle for a long periods of time usually to get rid of it yeah. and it, uh, yeah and again their rage is what causes most of the damage mm. uh, as well mm. if, if you just if you just had the pain and or feelings of superiority even but you never acted upon them and you didn't act upon them in anger uh, and you never acted upon them but rather you just felt why you have them mm. that would be much safer mm. but um, for your long-term mm. pain that you're going to have to <laughs> yeah. deal with. But uh, most people don't do that, unfortunately. Because that is an injury. It is like a soul-based injury in itself, isn't it? The desire to use those things. The to desire feel. to use superiority is one of the worst for, or desire for superiority is one of the worst I injuries to deal with, mm. even though it might seem very innocent to a person on earth. Mm. The reality is it's very hard for most people who have feelings of superiority to actually work through those mm. feelings. Mm -hmm. And uh, and usually they are the slowest at doing it as well. Yeah. So therefore they have the longest unhappiness mm. usually as well. So, that, you know, there's, a, there's lessons there for parents as well. Teaching your children to be superior yeah. is one of the worst things you can do as yeah. a parent to yeah. your child. Of course, teaching them to be inferior mm. is bad too. Yeah. But uh, to teach them to be superior, it's more highly likely that they're going to take some major steps in mm. their life to, you know, pull down and destroy other people. And feel legitimate in that and mm. not sort of like we've had a discussion recently in private about, you know, the motivations for uh, pulling another person down. You know, some people do it because they want control because they're terrified. Other people do it because they just really enjoy the feeling of superiority. And they enjoy seeing the other person's pain. Yeah. And, that's a, and it's very hard to give that up, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so those kind of people usually, and we, we, we know some of those people personally, yeah. who are trying to do things God's way, but yeah. they have a huge struggle and mostly unsuccessful struggle mm -hmm. uh, with giving up their levels of superiority and their underlying desire to pull apart people mm. and, and make them feel worse. That's right. And people like that in that latter category often feel like there is no injury, that th that the superiority and the harder. pulling down is, is like the normal state of being. There's no mm. sin in it. Mm -hmm. Whereas often when motivated by terror, there is a pang after doing it because it wasn't the, the, it's not what you're meant to do. It wasn't the, mo the motivation wasn't to make someone else feel bad. It was yeah. to avoid terror. And yeah. so when, you, when in your grappling to avoid the terror, you do make another person feel bad, usually that's almost like a feedback. You, you go, what did I just do? You know, yeah. that, that, I didn't feel like I wanted that to happen. I just did it mm. out of sort of almost blind desperation because I justified not feeling so you, my fear. So you did it driven by fear or shame. Yeah. And then afterwards you feel regret as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, Which mind adds you, to unless shame. you get rid of your fear and shame, you're still going to keep doing it, even if yeah. you have regret. Exactly. But but a person who does not have regret yeah. about pulling another person down and does not have fear, yeah. and does not have uh, 
uh, and enjoys the process, I yeah. should say, of yeah. um, pulling another person down and making them feel bad. Yeah, they have an extremely difficult time of yeah. it, changing yeah. that particular problem. Yeah. And uh, every person we know who, who has that feeling of superiority, which is usually caused by one or both parents engendering a feeling of superiority in the child. Yeah. Um, as soon as you ha have that as an injury, um, it's going to be very hard for you to give it up without mm. you going through a lot of damage of other people first. Yeah. And and that's where most of your pain is going to be because every time you damage another person, there's compensation for that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so these are important lessons, and they are. Um, and I think the discussion with Constance. Yeah. Sort of help explain at least a couple of those lessons, eh? Hey? Yeah, definitely. Mm. And, I, and I feel, um, you know, she came, it was interesting because I could feel her just around in the interim between when we talked to her on camera last and, mm. and then today. And it was interesting that there was so much power in her desire to come and yet it wasn't well. She, at first, I think she said she was having trouble, but really when I felt her, that wasn't really that... I feel that she's connected now more with this pain, but there's another driving force for speaking, which is not about getting assistance. It's more about conveying truth. And that's really, I love that when a spirit comes with that desire, you know, to, yeah, she, she to was help displaying, others. Yeah, she was displaying uh, what a repentant person would do. Yeah, interesting. Like, yeah. interestingly enough, yeah. I know our series of stuff is on repentance, and yeah. but a repentant person not uh, does feel the pangs of distress about their own behavior about yeah. how they've harmed others yeah. and also they feel a desire to do something about it yeah. like to compensate for it now mm. many times you can't compensate with the persons you harm because by then they've rejected you or you know they've um, left you or whatever yeah. but you can do it by teaching the truth to people who are harming others yeah which is what she wanted to do yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> mm. So it was a good, dis a good discussion with her. I feel just to illustrate the dangers of rage, mm. and also the importance of connecting emotionally to the real problem, yeah. rather than living in the uh, emotions of the of the rage about the real problem. Yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs>